Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from, from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy so, and we're live thanks kat and jay from imagine insights for joining how you doing good thank you thank you for having us yeah. Pleasure. we were supposed to do it face to face but you binned me unfortunately <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> no, it's not quite true. It's not quite true. How are you both finding, maybe Kat first, how are you finding working from home? I know you've got a little kid. How are you balancing everything? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, it's it's challenging. I'm quite used to working at home, so I'm quite lucky in the sense that I'm set up and, and able to do that. Um, I miss seeing other people, I must admit. Um, Jay and I used to hang out every day, and we're quite tactile, so we like a hug and those types of things. So definitely missing <laughs> that. Um, but we also, you know, our business operates predominantly online, so I think largely positive with with a few challenges i'd say <laughs> yeah. were you were you working a little bit from home before then like yeah. you quite used to yeah 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 so i would always kind of split my time between office and home um so yeah, yeah for me it's as long as i've got my laptop then i'm kind of okay <laughs> yeah great and jay what about you yeah it's all right i don't mind it because i quite like the I'm, I'm a habitual person so i quite like the routine of doing the same thing every day so it's kind of like um, up, exercise, go go to park, exercise, come home, start work, finish the day, play piano, all that kind of stuff. So I like it. I like the I like the routine of it. Um, but same as Kat, I miss I miss human beings, man. Like as, yeah. as much as I love my wife, I'm like, yeah, I need to just forgive. <laughs> I need to see some other people. <laughs> I need That's other true. human beings, man. That's true. How long did it take to get into your little routine? Maybe a couple of days. I think like I think it was like maybe two days, and I was kind of just because because I'm a I'm a, I have a very strict routine when we're out of all of this. Like in the normal yeah. world, I do the same yeah. thing pretty much most days anyway. I was like exercise and crap like that. So it's kind of I'm in a routine anyway. So it's kind of just shifting my routine to doing it from home. Um, the what actually you know the one thing I'm missing most is going to my jujitsu and Muay Thai classes. Like literally, I feel so sad. Like I'm I was about to start jiu jitsu. I was about to start it. Oh, bro. Um, yeah. zone, my... Fight Zone. Yeah. Fight Zone in okay. Bethany Green. Okay. Because, like, January, I was like, this year I wanted to learn jiu jitsu because I realized if I get into it, I, mean, I can't look after myself. But I have no idea what I'm doing, really. You know, you, know, you can see you can punch and kick and stuff. I used to do some Muay Thai. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really into UFC. And yeah. I loved it. I love watching that. And listening to Joe Rogan's podcast is the only yeah. other podcast I listen to. So I was going to get on it and then lockdown happened and I was like, damn. Yeah. You need to come, man. It's really good, man. I've been doing it a few years. I love Muay Thai. I loved you. So I think I just missed the, I missed it because I normally, I'm training what normally like 16 and a half hours a week. At the moment I'm doing like two hours a week and I literally feel so sad. You're like, doing you... two hours a week of what? Of uh, exercise? Oh, Cause I can't, like, I can't really, I can, I can drill jujitsu techniques, but it's not the same without a physical person to like, and my wife is tired of me, like manhandling. I'm like, come on, let's just, <laughs> That's so she's rough. like running away around the, around the kitchen. I'm like, come on, let's just, let's, let me just do one Kimura, one Kimura. <laughs> she's not keen. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. I've been, I do CrossFit a lot and I've actually upped it since I've been in lockdown. Nice. They pivoted to Zoom classes. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it used to be, I've got a couple of kids and a wife and my wife likes to do stuff. And then obviously I'm running a company and you've got to balance all these things. So my exercise was like, I've got to go to the gym and I've got to we book it in on a Sunday for the following week. Me and my wife decide what we want to do. But now we can just do it every single day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's, it's so, what you need. Man. I, think, I think a lot of people come out of this and be like, actually, you know what? I want to go to the gym properly now, like full time. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. I'm seeing a lot more people like running now. You know, no runners like yeah. Yeah. out doing like five k, donate five, 
yeah. thing, whatever it is. Yeah, someone nominated me for that, yeah. and I was like, nah. <laughs> you didn't fancy it. I went really hard for it. And then I saw, I saw, um, oh, what's his name? Um, the uh, 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 Ross Barkley from Chelsea. The hey. football, and he posted he did his 5K in 60 minutes. And then someone else said it was, a f it was fake. So I'm not quite sure, but 16 minutes for 5K is pretty decent. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's really, that's like, awesome. that's like athlete like level. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Do you find them just kind of saying that the, the kind of the exercise and fitness and stuff helps you cope with like running a company, life, business? Yeah, How do you for guys sure. I think we are both incredibly active people. Um, like the gym is our friend. Like it's <laughs> we're we're obsessed with fitness, and I think not just from that physical point of view. I mean, it's something that we've done like our whole lives, and I've like you know from gymnastics from young right through to dance, which I studied and then kind of carried on with with exercise, and and I'm now a PT. Like just I don't do that as a job, but I qualified as a PT. Bit that one in around that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's good to you. <laughs> But for men, yeah, mentally, definitely, it is that I start my day with that and that just sets me up. And I don't think I'm as nice a person if I don't exercise. Yeah, <laughs> oh, me too. Cool. I'm exactly the same. I think it's like, it's just a good way to set yourself off. Um, and just like, I, I literally cannot start the day without exercising. It's just weird if I don't exercise, I don't know what to do. Do you always do morning? Yeah, oh, dude, like... I have to do jujitsu more time in the evenings because they don't like the more. Actually, that's yeah. a lie. I do more time in the morning in jujitsu in the evenings. That's because they don't have any jujitsu classes in the morning. But um, but yeah, physically going to the gym, I can't physically go to like a gym gym in the evening. I'm like, why am I here up when it's dark? Like it doesn't make any yeah. sense. You fair morning. And so I mix it up a little bit whenever I can fit it in. To be honest. Yeah. yeah. Like, when you got kids, it is that in it? It's just, oh, like, yeah. yeah. And when did you guys start your business? So um, we've been going now since, oh gosh, May 2018. Um, and we had a major pivot in the business like September last year. So in this new way of working since September. Um, and then Kat, Kat joined in November. And um, yeah, I, I literally, I was thinking about this at the weekend, funnily enough, like we literally could not do what we do without the two of us. Like literally it's like, I'm horrendous operationally and kind of phenomenal <laughs> operationally. And I, I'm only really good at sales. So other than that, it's kind of like, literally without cat, I don't know if we'd probably have But, but um, Jay yeah. public speaking. Jay's, Jay's thing is all about public speaking. It's like, get him a stage, get him a video, get him anything like that. That, that is his, <laughs> that's his bag. <laughs> public speaking people, that's all I want to do. But, um, but yeah, no, so yeah, we've been going to that. And um, I'll probably just give you an overview of what we do. So yeah. in that way, yeah, we help um, agencies and brands to build their products, their branding, or their marketing by enabling them to collaborate with over two hundred thousand Gen Z consultants from across the country. So there's young people aged between sixteen to twenty-five that work as consultants for us. So the way it would work is, um, some that the NFL they come and say, okay, we want to do a marketing campaign aimed at this generation, and we go to our consultants via our app and we say to them, pitch to us the type of marketing campaign you would do for the NFL. So we get hundreds, if not thousands of ideas from across the country. We then filter through those, choose the best 15, take those 15 to the brand. The brand goes, these are the five ideas we love. And then those consultants are invited into the brand's head office or right now done virtually. And they work with the brand senior leadership team to actually create that marketing campaign or create that branding or that product, whatever it may be. So really it's crowdsourcing ideas and crowdsourcing talent for, for brands and agencies. Nice, nice. And then they get employed, paid and, and so forth. Yes, yeah, so they yeah, get paid. For that. Sorry. Yeah, they get, they get paid. So they'll um, they say they make it through. To, they'll get paid for their ideas, but then if they make it through to the workshop stage, yeah. um, whether that's virtually or in person, um, then they get paid more for that day. Um, but they can, they won't necessarily get employed off the back of it, but they can use that on their CV as um experience, which obviously opens lots of doors. Yeah, what would be quite interesting actually, if like if you look at the post-COVID era. I think I'm already starting to see more people who are kind of opting for a gig type, um, like work style, you know, like mm -hmm. a bunch of different things. And, and even a lot of younger people too. And, and you might find actually that these people are doing it for a career choice. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting to see if you see, if you see a big uptick in people wanting to 
wanted to contribute. Yeah, yeah. What, I think one of the interesting things that we've seen over the last maybe month or so is that our signups have gone through the roof, but mm -hmm. also um, a lot of our audience have been, they were the last into a company, so they're the first out. So a lot of them are just graduated and they were just been employed and then they've been made redundant. So for a lot of them, when we're speaking to them, they're saying, I need to have multiple streams of income coming in right um, um, after this, because I don't know if I go into my next job, if something comes along, they'll just can me again. So yeah. we are definitely, we're definitely re, uh, a side hustle for a lot of people. It's a way of getting to work with brands, getting to work with agencies, but they treat us as a side hustle, which is great for us. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be they could be students, but they could also be working or they could be at uni, you know, so they could be at school, uni, college or at work um, or actually yeah. none of those things. Um, it's, it's more about that age group. It shouldn't really matter about at what stage of your study or your career that you're in. Yeah. yeah. No, and I think it's great because you've got um, there's a few there's a few platforms, not for young people like Upwork and yeah. one or two others where say so if i if i want some marketing expertise or it development whatever i can go and stick my gig on there um which is quite cool and i just i, I see that more i see that growing going forward you know yeah. for you guys with the age range that you're focusing on i think you'll yeah i think you'll find it will it will grow a lot in terms of the number of young people wanting to use it and also companies yeah. as well yeah 100 percent. i agree I'm interesting. Why did you uh, decide to go for a co-founder in the end? <laughs> um, I made him do it a little bit. <laughs> Basically, if if I'm being honest, I wasn't looking for a co-founder. So when I was I was hiring for a head of operations, um, I met Kat, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, like I can't hire as a head of operations. I was like, she's so freaking because Kat's been in the industry for like, for, she, like she just got so much expertise. And everybody I spoke to about her was just like, yeah, she's amazing. Like, you can't just hire her some basic role. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, and then when we were basically, we just went for long walks. Like, we literally walked around all of East London just talking. And we were just talking about how we did. Come for a walk with me and we'll have a chat. <laughs> yeah, literally. We went for this walk. We just walked around and we like, oh, we're here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then when I, when I went after those walks, I was kind of just like, yeah you're perfect for that role but i think you're also perfect as a human being to help help me push this forward um and yeah it's literally invaluable like the the, the now being able to take that pressure off of having to think of everything up myself or running a, 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 of, the, of the company or whatever being able to share that with cat has i'm just so much happier about life because doing <laughs> it is just the worst <laughs> Yeah, no, they say it's important. It's good to have a. It's good to have a co-founder. It's good to have people to share things with and share the load and stuff. And it sounds like you've both got very different skill sets, which yeah. it's perfectly. Yeah, yeah. What, what your... views, but very, very different skill sets. Yeah. 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 What were you doing before, Cap? Um, a few things. Uh, so <laughs> I, I was predominantly spent a lot of time in media agencies. Um, um, so that was kind of the yeah the bulk of my career um also worked at buzzfeed for a bit and then kind of um after that started my own consultancy so media marketing consultancy which actually still runs um so yeah that's been that's that was four years ago now and then obviously found found jay and the rest is history nice, nice. and jay how come you started like what was the driver for the starting your own yeah. firm it's a good question i think that the the main the main push behind starting it was really, I just looked at our industry and our space and I just saw it's a freaking nightmare to try and get into it and, and, and get involved. And for us, it was really, we were seeing, well, for me, I was seeing so much talent out there that had, they had so many ideas that I know this industry needed, but they just had no way of, of, of getting it out there. And for me, I knew I had to really go out there and, and prove that this talent was, was worth bringing into the room. So really it was just going out to brands and going, hey, let's just, let's just try this. And if we can come up with some good ideas, then pay us. And it was really doing that at the start. And they were like, oh, okay, cool. And the NFL were like, yeah, let, let's give it a go. And it, and it worked. And that for, for a lot of brands, it was kind of just like, oh, sick. Like there are talented people that are outside of our four walls. There are talented people that aren't white and middle class. And it was kind of like, and it's just, and it's just, it was kind of, really just going there's a whole bunch of talent out there that we are missing as an industry simply for the fact that we don't know how to reach out to them a lot of the time or we just don't know 
we don't know where they are. So I think, yeah, it was really just looking at it and going, okay, there's a massive need in our space as an industry. But then I saw that that need could easily be solved by the new talent that, that's coming up. So it was just connecting the two together. Nice, nice. What's the plan moving forward? So it's, it's focus on the same thing. You mentioned pivoting a little bit. Yeah, What's so we, we actually, so when we first started the company, it was actually, we were running as a startup incubator in secondary schools. So basically just helping young people to launch their own businesses. So that was it. And I, it wasn't even a business. It was kind of me as like a, a hobby while I was working, consulting at a firm. I was kind of like, I'll, I'll start doing this and just help people start their own business and just give them some of my own cash to help them get their business off the ground. That was it. That was all it was. But then um, one of our brands came to us and was kind of like, hey, we don't really want to do anything in the startup space, but is there any chance your young people could help us to create a marketing campaign? And then that's when the light bulb went off for me. And I was like, okay, if they want it, other people might want it. Started to look into the space more and then um, carried on there. So we made that pivot, that full pivot in September last year. Um, and really the, the future for us is scaling across the UK more. So um, we've got our new app that launches, hopefully, God willing, September. Um, and then really it's just scaling across the UK, getting more young people on our platform in the UK. But we literally all the time, every brand we meet with, all they ask is, when are you going to the US? Yeah. When are you going to mainland Europe? Why yeah. the US? Um, I think just a lot of brands have, um, like, you know, there's if, if it's the big brands, then they've often got yeah. offices in, in the US. But um, yeah, it must be every meeting, right, that we get asked yeah. that. Um, so like, yeah, next is next is the US and obviously Europe as well. You need so, to the USC. You need to get the USC in. Oh, yeah. dude, that'd be yeah. so cool. Oh my be- so <laughs> But yeah, so I think the next the next step for us is really US, mainland Europe. I've just seen recently over the last couple of days, we've had consultants sign up from like Czechoslovakia and stuff. So oh, wow. it's, yeah, which is really, really cool. So we're starting to spread over there. We're, we're getting consultants over there. So really, it's just yeah. starting to really solidify our solidify our presence in those countries and just continue to scale up. Yeah. Nice. So, so predominantly the clients are UK and then your, your consultants are sounding like becoming more global. And then yes. as you build it up, you'll be able to go into different countries and exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, you know, we, are, we have big aims, but also we do then have to go, right, we're still a small business, we're still a startup. We still just need to like go through, you know, some of those early processes. But yeah, I mean we've got we've got big dreams and why shouldn't we You're be? Big. Definitely, definitely. I set up an office in New York in January, oh, which cool. is awesome. Congrats. Yeah. Kind of it's kind of like um Obviously, it's a bit slower now than it would have done if COVID hadn't hit. Um, but it's just a, it's a great thing to do. And if you can find the right people there, yeah, um, it's, it's great. How did you go about finding the, I know it's probably you meant to be asking us questions, but anyway. <laughs> how did you go about finding the right people? Um, in, in, in the US. Yeah. So, so there's, there's, kind of, there's probably two ways you can do it. So to start with, you can either think about people that you might already know. You know, so I, I knew a great lady uh, called Kelly who I'd met a couple of years ago in London and she just left her last executive search firm. I run an exec search business. Yeah. Um, and so we connected. I had a chat with her and it was just perfect timing and she was keen to set something up, do it with us. Um, so it worked really nicely. Otherwise, you have to go and recruit. Um, and so, you know, whether you might be advertising, using a headhunter, um, whatever it might be, but I think the first the first person there is the is the most important because yeah. you haven't got you're not physically there, and um, you know as much as this video is really cool, it's just it's as you said like it's nothing nothing better than cuddling someone right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, and it takes time to like build up. It's just different. It's different yeah. over video. Yeah. So. Um, they say hire slow and fire fast. Yeah. So you've got, just got to take your time yeah. to find the right people. And um, yeah, often it's, you know, often it can be the person that real makes, really makes a difference versus the product. You know, you, you often see like the most innovative products not do so well, but something that's been done before, just done a little bit better by some amazing team. Yeah, yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. The other thing is, is, is uh, I asked a lot of industry contacts so again, like clients, um, so clients are quite good. They've got quite a good network in your industry probably as well. Yeah. And 
there's always people the cool thing is there's a lot of people um, more and more now wanting to move from big firms uh, and work in smaller entrepreneurial environments yeah you know, there's a lot of there's a lot to be said for it and and so yeah i think a lot of people will be keen when you're yeah. ready that's cool, man. I'm excited, dude. Like, I, I, can't, I literally cannot wait for it. And I, the good thing is, one thing I'm happy about is, even though we're a small team now, we all have the, the exact same values. Yeah. And I think for us, it's just, it makes everything so much easier because I always say, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, I know that Cat and Cat and team could literally just run off and, 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 and keep it moving because we have the same value and the same mission behind everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> so again. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Um, so did you have an office at the moment if you weren't locked down? Yeah, in Shoreditch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shoreditch. Yeah. Could you see yourself moving more to like if people want to work from home? Did it have to come into the office, or um, do you yeah. see it as an integral part of the of the community that you're building? Yeah, we're we're, we're completely flexible. I mean, yes, we want to we want to be in an office, of course, um, but we're also like very behind people having their own time and their own space. And so, you know, yes, we might have a standard working day, but if people want to work different hours because they've got other stuff to do or they've got, you know, they want to exercise or whatever it might be, then yeah, so be it. As long as the work gets done, um, that's the beauty of being a startup as well is that you can kind of really create the atmosphere that you want to create and what we've got is a real like jay said our values but a really open dialogue so our intern anna for example has as much of the voice as we do you know we share absolutely everything with her she knows how the business runs she knows the cash flow of the business she knows you know what we're thinking the calls we have if she might not be on them but she knows afterwards so i think yeah it's really important just to have as long as you've got, you've got a culture then that can work from anywhere yeah. yeah, pretty cool. What have you done to stay connected to the team? Are we doing like daily video calls? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. have video call morning and afternoon. I mean, Jay and I do all the time anyway. Um, <laughs> we get <laughs> and daytimes in our sleep. Um, <laughs> uh, we play games as well sometimes, don't we? Yeah. Do quizzes. Jay likes a quiz, so we, we do a few right. quizzes. Um, yeah. yeah, just. Yeah. just Make sure that we're, we're, we're cool. what have you been using zoom or hangouts both yeah both. Yeah, both. Yeah, both. yeah yeah i think so for some reason we were having so much trouble with hangouts the other day um oh. but in zoom sometimes it just does that like oh you 40 minutes are done and it's just you're like all right bye locks you out yeah, yeah. For struggle i found the hangouts have been quite good to video these things and in fact for my team actually as well we do uh, we do like a daily 2 p.m chat mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Like, hey, what's going on because everyone's also some people are living with other people some people are on their own yeah um, my heart is to, to think, like to really understand how people are feeling because yeah. like they click on the the video and they're like hey yeah, and then yeah. you know, it goes off you don't know yeah um, yeah well that's yeah, also been, something that we've been discussing you know we've said haven't we that if you aren't feeling good and you're not having a good day or something's frustrating you then you also need to say and yeah. like we've had that chat quite recently there's been you know an issue with something and it's really got to both of us so we've yeah. got to talk about that because we need to work out how we can overcome that and especially yeah. now we're not there in person yeah yeah. yeah yeah it's really important it's really important awesome guys really great to chat to you both um next time let's do face to face for mm -hmm. sure and you can teach me a little bit of, uh, of jujitsu. Yeah. What, what was the um, what was the place you go to? Fight Factory, did you say? Fight Zone, Fight Zone in Bethnal Green. Fight Zone. All right. That's an advertisement. I will shout them for my money when I advertise for them. So yeah, Fight Zone. Yeah. Um, you need to come to the jujitsu class with Marco or with Raf, um, right. and come to the Muay Thai class with Jose in the morning. And I expect to see you there, bro. I, honest to God, I will. <laughs> literally. I'm all over it. I need to check their timetable so my wife doesn't beat me up for like, <laughs> <laughs> for her off. I mean, literally, that, this was this was like written down. I wrote it down. I want to learn jujitsu this year. Um, That's like, is that is the best martial arts you can learn easily? How long have you done it for? Um, jeez, maybe five, maybe five oh, years, wow. maybe a little bit longer. I did, oh, it was, literally for as long as I can remember. Amazing, amazing. Now I'm going to do it, man. I'm hitting forty next year, and I'm like, need to learn something new. Do it. 
dude, for real. I think Kat's frozen. Or is Kat frozen? Yeah, I think she's frozen. Hello. Oh, you're still there. All right, perfect time. Perfect time. Great to chat. You too.